Hey, what's up guys? Arnavini here and this is the new Flush Plus 2. Yep, it's now a fully independent RAM but still owned by Alcatel. They released the two variant, is 2GB and 3GB RAM. Na meron ding 16 gigabytes of internal storage and 32 gigabyte variant and all the other specs are the same with them so on paper specs wise definitely it's a thumbs up but do take note that it's using the 1.8 gigahertz clock speed rather than the higher 2.0 gigahertz version ng mt6755 or more popular as the helio p10 which is is the pinakabagong processor ng mediatek Unboxing the Flash Plus 2, it only includes a USB cable and quick charging adapter plus some few paperworks. No headphones and no manual since the user guide is built in as a phone, similar with the Star Mobile's implementation. This year's Flash Plus 2 is actually made up of a metal frame. Compared from the previous year in a plastic build, it actually looks nice and surprisingly light. It only weighs 155 even having with a full metal body frame. The back cover niya is removable. Also made up of a metal with some plastic padding, still dual SIM, isang nano and micro SIM na meron ding micro SD. Unfortunately, the battery is built in and naka screw, but thankfully it's a huge 3000 mAh battery. Isa sa mga highlight features niya is the quick charging and in just 30 minutes meron ng 50% battery juice ang phone. And it's actually true, I tested it out and got the same result plus full charge na yung phone in just an hour. The LED light notification is a great guide if fully charged na yung phone. So it stays lighted habang charging pa yung phone but once done, it will automatically turn off. Although only one color showing the sa LED light which is the color white and no other colors. Buttons on the sides are also metal with chrome design, but I don't like the position of the power button. Uh, placing it sa top, then volume rocker sa baba. For its size, kasi in a 5.5 inch, it's quite hard to reach when using with one hand. But then, it's just minor for me, since pwede namang activate yung gesture feature na double tap to wake and sleep, which is more convenient on my end. Uh, since again, it has a large display, so tapping on the screen is easier rather than reaching the power button. But speaking of display, it's a full HD with great viewing angle and with vivid bright colors thanks to the Mirror Vision 2.0 and the adaptive display feature. So it automatically adjusts the brightness of the screen depending kung nasan ka man. But one side comment is the bezel sa side ng display. Medyo makapal siya, but thankfully, yung top and bottom naman ay well balanced in terms of spacing. Plus, may backlit yung capacitive button sa bottom chain part ng phone. But for the most part of the display, it's superb, nice color reproduction, and crispiness. Isa pa sa mga bagong nadagdag sa Flash Plus 2 is the tablet look button below. And physically, that is a fingerprint scanner. Yep, same with other flagship phones, they also added this sensor. And actually, it's pretty darn fast. So when I say fast, it's faster than any fingerprint scanner with the same price. Usually, kasi when scanning a finger, it needs to hold a few seconds. But with this device, it's just by tapping on the sensor. And yun, andak na kagad siya. And bihira ako mag hit and miss. So usually, it will just miss kapag sobrang bilis lang talaga ng pag scan ko. But most of the time, it's working plus kahit mag-scan ka na nakabalik yung phone, pwede rin. And actually, hindi lang for unlocking the phone ang feature ng scanner. Pwede ka mag-open ng application na gusto mo when tapping dun sa scanner. Like here on my end, I put my index finger to open the camera app, which is yung left side. And then yung thumb ko to unlock the phone. And then yung right index finger ko naman to launch again. And it actually works well. Very convenient. It loads the app very fast. So if you're on the go and you're using a specific apparate, just set kung ano mang finger ang gagamitin nyo and then it does the job. But take note, only 5 fingers lang ang pwedeng i-register so use it wisely. Now, since the phone uses the Helio P10, I was expecting a pretty much increase in terms of performance with the phone. But since it's the underclock version, ito yung mga napansin ko. Performance, no doubt, it performs well. Multitasking, opening apps, switching from one another is pretty solid with this device. And the stack Android is a great addition. It's also running on Marshmallow stack Android. And all the new cool stuff ng Marshmallow can be used dito like the adaptive feature where it combines the internal storage with the SD card, the battery optimization, when on a standby mode, it saves more battery juice, and other good stuff. I was just a bit disappointed when it comes to playing highly graphically demanding games on a high settings. 
Like for example, the NBA 2K16, alam naman natin na very demanding tong game na to. It's definitely playable on a low and mid settings, but once you go high settings, you'll see a huge drop when it comes to frame rate. But then, it's still playable, yun nga lang, medyo slow motion na yung effects. Same with the Assassin's Creed Identity, it's a new game by the way. It's smooth but still, I encountered some huge drop frames, but then for casual users or slightly demanding games, for sure, super battery smooth siya. But still, 2GB of heavy multitasking work will not be enough, so probably upgrading it to a 3GB variant may be a better choice. But great news, when it comes to temperature, all throughout my review, I didn't have any temperature more than 40 degrees, which is a big, big plus. So playing on a straight usage will give a long-lasting gaming experience, which on my end, on my battery benchmark, my result was 6 hours and 30 minutes, which is not bad for a straight usage. Since again, there's a quick charge feature, it will save a lot of time charging. In this device again, for just 1 hour fully charged on your phone, and for casual usage, it can go half of the day or even more than that if you're just going to use it for call and text and some social media apps usage. So since VR is getting all the hype this year, thankfully, the Flush Plus 2 is future-proof, it has a built-in gyroscope, almost all the sensors are functional, so using it with any mobile VR glasses will surely be immersive. So I played several games using Bluetooth controller and just the VR itself. The performance is a thumbs up, then pairing it with the decent headphones since again these phones also feature a hi-fi audio. So speaking of the hi-fi audio, it may sound too good to be true, but they mentioned it has a built-in audio amplifier chip. So I compared the quality of the audio with my other devices. I was surprised that the sound quality is way better. Playing high quality audio and flock files are just insanely detailed. And there's a big boost in terms of the bass surrounding and in fact, the built-in music player has a DJ app where it can mix and compose its own music with some cool effects like DJ sounds and it's like actually a light version of virtual DJ available in Google Play Store. So again, the audio sound quality of this device is on point but the speaker is just lang ako, but still better compared to other smartphones out there. Moving on to the camera, 13 megapixel yung main, then meron dual tone flash, but for the front camera, it's only 5 megapixel, then fixed focus pa. But don't worry, meron siyang flash that you can set it on, off, and automatic, and force on, I think, which is convenient when taking photos or videos, even yung sa main camera. So, ang usually ginagawa ko, I just turn on the LED light, and then I can shoot from it. And also, yung LED light niya is very bright. So, kung ayon yun ng flash style, yung kanyang dual tone flash, pwedeng yung set to, again, open all throughout. So, if you want to take photo or video, very convenient siya. Now, in terms of quality of the output, mabilis mag focus yung camera. And the color reproduction is on point. Medyo nagiging greeny lang pang medyo low light na. But slightly moderate lang. And barely not noticeable yung grades unless you zoom in the photo. So color of the output is more on the yellowish side. Even the edges are sharp and above average naman yung quality. But for the video, there is an EIS feature. So usually this can be turned off. But it's turned on by default by the way. But it stabilized the video using the software. I usually disable it because it's kinda delay when it comes to fast pacing movement when you're capturing video. Medyo bummer nga lang yung front camera kasi naka fix focus lang siya. But for selfie lovers for sure, the beautification built in feature ay magugustuhan nila. Overall, I love the phone, blazing fast, charging, decent performance, and battery life. Plus, workable photo, definitely the Flush Plus is hard to beat for its price and features. So, and that's about it guys for the Flash Plus 2. I'm Arnavino. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you like this content. And if you do have questions, feel free to post it down below in the comments section. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Just click the subscribe button there. Sa side nung like. And there. So once again, I'm Arnavino. And see you on my next video.